everybody. How are you doing today? I'm going to be channeling Queen Elizabeth II. As we know, she recently passed away. So I'm going to visit her, see what wisdom she would like to share with all of us. It's very recent. I'm not sure if there's any heavy weight upon her heart. And sometimes you'll come across that with newly deceased souls. And even souls that died a long time ago are still carrying the same weight. And maybe she's breezy, maybe she's clear-minded, maybe she has an open message for us to receive something that is going to help us grow as a human race. And she's an important figure in history. She made an impact on the world. I'd love to hear what she has to say. I'm going to relax and get tuned in and we'll see where this goes. Okay. All right. This is my first experience. It's almost like I'm walking into a painting. It's a painting of a hallway. It's a painting of doors. It's a painting of a big, great room. There's shadow. I see kids opening, closing doors and sneaking from room to room. Laughing, opening a door, running, hiding in another room. And these scenes are overlapping. So it's not just one open space and I'm seeing this in one open space. There's a lot of layers going on here. I feel like I'm walking towards a great room, a much larger room here where you could sit down. Maybe there's a giant fireplace, but it seems like there's a shadow cast upon it. And then the color is... No, noticeably like a hunter green, okay? It's a darker green color with shadow. Even the fireplace seems to not illuminate the room. And it feels like the children that are running from room to room are something of echoes of the past. The happier times of the past. Innocence of the past. I see that she stands as a ghost in the great room and she's showing me that nobody is sitting down here. Nobody is in conversation and here she is standing as a ghost in this room. Then she shows me layers of time and showing me how many faces she had seen sitting in this room and now there are no faces here and she stands as a ghost here. She shows me time. She shows me time. And we're not talking 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 4 years. We're talking a human being who lived, what, 96 years is how, how many years she lived for? But that's not what she came to talk to me about. And I say, that's interesting. I thought I came to talk to you. <laughs> okay. What did you want to tell me? And she finds that interesting. I did come to talk to her, but I came asking her what she would like to say to the world. And she's coming to me to answer me, answer that question. She's coming to me to answer that question that I have for her. She wants to say that <sighs> it's not like it's words right now, more so than a sensation. I see a heart that's shaking, but a heart that is choosing strength and courage and a heart that chooses strength and courage, even if it is shaking, is still clear, is still clear. And I see a heart that's full of sand, actually. But she is emanating that she really wants to emanate that she is she did not die with a heavy heart. And to me, I say, but what does a heart of sand mean? What is a heart of clarity, but yet requiring the courage and the strength? Okay, so... 
We're going to continue to move forward here, okay? Because she doesn't want anybody to feel like she's um, in a bad place, like she's in a purgatory or she's... Um, because genuinely, she feels clean. She feels um, in deep reflection. I see clean, crystal clear water. I see a time of meditation, reflection of who she's been in this lifetime. Um, I don't see an attachment necessarily to um, the work isn't done yet. She still has a role to play. I still see her eyes upon the earth, but right now the circulation is within her own soul. And I'm talking to her about herself as a ghost in a great room where nobody sits. I'm talking to her about the sand in her heart and the strength. Even this shaking person has clarity because they have strength and courage. And it's the strength and courage that is the clarity. It, that right there is the clarity. So even if you're shaking, when you choose strength and courage, you are choosing clarity. You are choosing with clarity. That's, that's what she's trying to say. Because nobody's perfect. Nobody has this heart of gold that hasn't um, absorbed a lifetime of, of situations and question marks and unresolved and unreconciled. It's, it's like accepting that this is an inevitable human life. It's going to include these things. But when I choose strength and courage, I choose clarity. She really is showing me that the sand in her heart did not weigh her down. That when she went through difficult times that it didn't weigh her down. I see, and it's showing me sand, sand in a bag, like sandbags, like... Um, there's a flood and we have all these sandbags that are helping to save the community from all of this water that could come in. But she shows me the heart fills up with sand and perhaps the water represents emotion. But um, she's re really expressing how she wouldn't um, let herself get weighed down. And like I see uh, somebody um, instead of like a ball and chain uh, connected to their leg, tossed off the pirate ship, goes down to the abyss of the ocean. Instead, they have like a bag of sand attached to their leg and they're, they're, they're just falling into the abyss of their emotions. That's not what she did. She could admit that she um, carried this, this difficult human life like we all do, but she wouldn't let herself um, drop into the abyss because that, that's not an option. That's not an option for somebody at her level. She has to represent clear-mindedness and strength. And that is a true leader. That is a true leader. Now it's like planting the seeds of this true leader in us all. And asking yourself if you're weighed down by the sand in your heart, is it taking you to the abyss of your emotions? And if you could call yourself a true leader, which you can, because we can all be true leaders, what strength and what courage do you need to, um, to express in your life? And you'll be a role model for generations of your family and your friends. Even of, um, I mean, depending on where you are in society, it could be a whole world. And something about the word enduring. She lived a long life and she endured life. And that was her strategy. That was her strategy. So I'm going to sit down in this great room so somebody can be in here because I'm still seeing it and I like to change things from this gloomy question mark to, well, here we go. I'll sit in the great room. Now someone's here. 
and I'm going to make sure this fire is illuminating every crack and crevice of the space and you're not a ghost anymore. You can sit down right next to me. No, 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 no. She says no. She says no, I, I am a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of makes a funny joke like and I'm haunting you know like I'm haunting the castle or I'm haunting like um, woo, I'm haunting this place <laughs> she's kind of funny about it I say that's cool I wonder how many other ghosts are haunting this place and she smiles peacefully She really values family and she really values family history. She really values all the stories that were told generation after generation about different members of the family. And she has really big open eyes about storytelling about family. And she says, okay, <sighs> She's showing me a royal family. And then th this, is, this is true, okay? This is true with all families. Obviously, their family is um, exposed to the public eye. Their family is a little bit different than most families because they're a royal family. So they have a, um, a different um, representation of family. And she says that family must stick together even tighter um, when you're in the public eye because it it, it carries um, it's almost like you have to to constantly uphold a level of dignity you have to because you have to always represent that leadership w without falter almost like perfectly and if that if you could be held um, and notably, as uh, somebody who, who could uphold that caliber of presentation, that you would be respected. And that respect would go far with people. And that anything that would happen in this royal family, um, that respectable people, that, that those who had earned that respect and title, um, as somehow they, they represent a reminder of what we need to uphold in order to bring balance to the royal family and, and what we truly represent in the world. Because it, there's this, there's this uh, sensation, like she's shaking her head, like this. She is saying that we're not a scandal, we're a family. We're a family. This is makes her sad because how is she to help anybody understand that they were genuinely a, a family? This isn't like some special soap opera. We're not here for drama. We're a family and we, we hold a representation of a history. It's like, um, she understands the many different emotional viewpoints and uh, eye rolls that people could um, give to the royal family in, in today's modern society. But still, she upholds that, that level of, of what we've always represented, of a history. And it comes back to this, you know, haunting, you know, and um, she smiles because she can see the many faces from her stories that she remembers growing up. Um, they had traversed the, <laughs> this palace, <laughs> they had traversed their royal family home, right? They, they would come back to visit, absolutely. And she can see that now, and she can see their faces. And I, I feel like that this great room is almost like a turn of events. Um, 
because um, To be honest, it kind of feels like the royal family might, might in some way be um, turning a new leaf and, and what, what they're, how do I want to say this? You, you could look at time and see the purpose of the royal family in history. And it's a modern day world. I just see the turning of the tide. I see the turning of time. And I see that the reason that the faces are becoming um, fewer and fewer to nothing. And that now ghosts um, are among us here. And I don't see replacements. I don't see replacing. Um, and it seems like there is a purpose and there's a divine time for, for each family or each role. And that time changes. I feel like, to be honest, it feels like a book is going to be closing. That what a royal family is, is not um, as necessary for, for the world as it once was. That, that's what it feels like to me. That she doesn't, um, there's no sadness in her heart about this. Because she keeps showing me that it's almost like it's a dying breed. Those who... Who, who do not waver on upholding that esteem of leadership. It's becoming a dying breed. And people not, are... How do I want to say this? Are people looking for, for these types of leaders? Are people looking for these types of respectable people. It seems like we're valuing something new as a human race. A, a new sound, a new vision, what attracts us to liking something over something else. And what we valued at one time as a human race is changing. And we're valuing something different. And it's not, her role is a necessary in the human race anymore. Her, her as this representation, um, has come full circle. Um, her role is complete. That's what it's like. And she's thankful. She's thankful to the world that she got to be Queen Elizabeth II, she's thankful to the world. She, she has a beautiful heart. She, she is a genuine person. She is a real human being who... who learned how to be a great leader, a respectable one, over decades of time and didn't waver on that, who cherished her family and loved the many stories told about other family members from the past, that family needs it needs to be strong with one another. It needs to support one another. It needs to help one another. That that creates a strong family. And that that feels like all I meant to share because I I see her at peace. Again, in a place of meditation, I see clean water, I see a circulation of, of inner peace in her soul, just time to really reflect on her life as a human being. Hmm. That was really a nice experience. 
really grateful I got to have that experience with her. I'm just taking a moment to digest all of this because you don't know what you're going to get. But that was beautiful. And she didn't want to stoop to any level of, of sadness or any level of um, regret or any level of what could have been better. Or... That's not in her nature. It's not her style. It's not like her to do that. That's what it feels like she's... She really, she really learned a level of manners. She was polished and she really was that as the most important thing that she could be in her life. Hmm. Thank you all so much for watching. If any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. Hope you all have a great day.